Welcome to Third World Entrepreneurs Podcast, the straight talking podcast about life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Today, we will be chatting with one of New York's male health designers about male reproductive health and prostate exam. Both female and male reproductive functions in general are essential for the health and survival of our species. Yet, until recently, the field of male reproduction research and discussions has been surprisingly neglected possibly due to biases, wrongly considering reproduction to be mainly a female issue, social and cultural misconception, stigma, limited social conversations, which leads to widespread myths and how males themselves view their health. I have had to force my partner at some point to look into things related to his um, health. My favorite response is, I am fine. It's not a big deal. I've got work, Jojo. These are phrases men often use to dismiss health concerns and avoid visiting their doctors. However, since there are usually no symptoms of severe physical illness such as prostate cancer, regular checkups with a GP are essential in detecting many diseases that affect men's health. In this episode, I will be speaking to Reza Amin, PhD. He is the founder of Bastion Health with a vision to provide private, simple and accessible, comprehensive at-home support for men's care to bring men's health to a 21st century experience and standard. So without further ado, let's welcome Raza to the show. For me, when something good is about to happen, and I love your story. You. Seriously, I love your story. So do you want me to officially now answer the questions? Yeah, okay. yeah. Just tell me about you first. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me um, on your podcast. So a little bit about my background. Um, so I did my, by training, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. And I did uh, my bachelor's in electrical, my master's in mechanical. I started my PhD in medical device and healthcare technology. When, when you're doing engineer work, there are a lot of great trainings that you get. But then the problem you solve is not always the best problems. But when it comes to healthcare, especially um, on the field that I'm focusing on, there are a lot of interesting problems to solve. Mm -hmm. And starting my PhD, I start focusing on uh, medical devices and health technologies so that we can design solutions that are easy, accessible, and affordable so everyone can use them and get benefit out of them. Mm -hmm. So starting my PhD, I start uh, focusing on healthcare technologies. I've done, in the last 10 years, I've done a lot of research. And then um, when me and my wife, we were in our pregnancy journey, in our journey, we find out that uh, when we were trying to get pregnant, there are a lot of support for, for women, but we find out there are not too many solutions and uh, technologies available to guide men through the essential preparation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we find out that is uh, symptomatic of something larger. In general, when it comes to men's healthcare, men are not very proactive and there are no solution designed for men in order to provide them with the support they need. And therefore, uh, I started Bastion and Bastion Health now is the solution that uh, helps men for their reproductive health and prostate health. So from the comfort of their home, they can focus on the... Um, on the support that they can get from the clinicians, health coaches, and that they can do from testing to treatment and lifestyle changes from the comfort of their home. Wow. <laughs> you took the personal and made it professional, right? <laughs> like, well, let's go a bit more into it because for me, I was born in a third world country. Yeah. And if you've listened to my podcast, you know, areas that I try to do it. People, particularly who feel like the third world or who live in Europe and they feel like the third world, 
No one should be named the third world. No one should feel like that. And someone asked me the other day, why did you call it the third world if you're always talking about why, how people shouldn't feel like that? I'm like, because you have to be in the darkness to see the light. So when you see the light, you know your part to where you're going. And, and this is actually your story because you were in a place and there was no answer in that environment. And the society we live in is sort of tailored to certain things. I heard on the radio once that infertility contributes from men, right? Contribute to more than half of all cases of global childlessness. Yeah. Now, for a girl who's coming from a third world, it is always the woman's fault. When you're in a marriage and it's not working, the first question goes to the woman. As a male, you started Bastion Health with a vision to provide, you know, simple, accessible and comprehensive at home support for men, like you said. What were your most difficult challenges? As a founder of Bastions, probably there's not a lot there. When you do research as a lawyer, I know you need more information. And when you don't have that, what were your most difficult, particularly also from social acceptance sort of perspective, what did you, you know, fight and, and, and struggle with in creating this amazing concept? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. So uh, there, there are, let, me, let me start with, um, with one um, uh, interesting experience that I had. So it doesn't matter where you are coming from. Yeah. When it comes to men's health, mm. it doesn't matter if you're in the, you're living in the developed country or underdeveloped country. When it comes to men's health care and, uh, and in general, m- anything men's health under the belt, there is a huge stigma around it mm. and men are not comfortable talking about it. Definitely not. <laughs> and that resulted in men not knowing a lot about their health. That resulted in sometimes women partners knowing more about men's health care than men knowing about their health care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so interestingly, uh, when we were doing our research, we find out that it's not so easy to talk about these topics because there is this stigma around it. Yeah. yeah. But then we, as a, as a founder and as, a, as an entrepreneur, we needed to always design, design a solution for our users. So that was one of the first feedback we got. Men are not comfortable talking about doing a prostate exam. They think that prostate exam is a rectal exam. Men are not comfortable about um, about uh, men's fertility and about doing semen analysis because they need they think of a cold room and a magazine and a cup in their hand mm-hmm. and they need to collect the sample in that cold room. So there are a lot of uh, things that uh, basically prevent men from opening up and having those conversations. And then we learn that we need to make it easier. So we, we, we find out that men are not proactive because the solutions are not easy enough. Uh, we need to design a solution around our users. So that was a great feedback. In, initially, it was hard because we couldn't really get a lot of feedbacks. Then we start sort of designing the solution in a way that we can talk for with men in the comfort of their home. Yeah. Then we, we, we try to sort of like use texting and asynchronous chatting and texting helped men open up and share their stories yeah and going going with so getting these feedbacks we started designing also the, our technology around it in a way that men could have access to the 24 7 asynchronous chatting with their care coordinator they can talk they can they can actually contact their care coordinators after hours because men usually think that nothing is more than more important than, the, than their job. So they're not going to stop <laughs> their job and go to clinics. So we said, okay, if you prefer to have conversation with doctors after hours, okay, that's 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 what you want. So we started designing the solution in a way that is more comfortable and in a way that is more convenient. Mm-hmm. And now we are seeing that men are it's easier for men to open up, share their stories, talk about the problem they have, learn about uh, how they can improve it, and be more engaged in the process. 
Wow. Listen, you've just, in few minutes, you've just told me a lot about <laughs> what I'm doing wrong in my relationship when it comes to like <laughs> tending to his need. Because no, women, we sometimes we don't pay attention. It's, it's good to hear it from a man in, in this sort of issues. As a woman, not a lot of us understand because it's been socially, culturally, we have actually accepted certain things. But from what you said, I'm thinking maybe we have accepted certain things without looking. What do you actually need to get certain things functioning, if that makes sense? I think the changes facing men, reproductive health are not discussed enough in, in terms of bringing women into the discourse is there's a, a bit of isolation because I'm actually thinking I, I I didn't think of it that way and there are different women around the globe who are feeling the way I am feeling and the the poor rate of men's communication to things but how do you think would be easier yeah for women to easily get into this kind of conversation. I don't think the conversation has involved women yet. We are seeing things from a different perspective as it is. So how do we incorporate women into this? Yeah, so um, first of all, as a designer, uh, so I consider myself as a designer who designs technology. You're so a creator and a designer. Yes. <laughs> so as a designer, and we are designing things from a scratch. We're designing from zero to one. We are designing from nothing mm. to something. And then we, and, and then after that, from that something, we are growing it up to something bigger. Yeah. And that's with probably with any entrepreneur and with the field that we are um, working on, that's the same thing. The first thing is to, to do some observation, as you mentioned, to do some research. Mm. Initially, when, you, when, we, when we were doing the research, we find out that we need to design a solution around men. We find out that in general, women are the chief medical officers of homes. <laughs> so they that are is. making a lot of decision about the healthcare of the yeah. family. Yeah. They ask their children, their partners to do the follow up checkups and uh, make sure that they are doing the annual checkups. Everyone get their vaccine and everything is, is planned. Mm. And, um, and th this is, this is an observation that maybe 80% of the time is true. But then as a designer, we are designing for users mm -hmm. about their behavior. So we know that women are taking a lot of, uh, uh, sort of, they're, they're taking a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. to have a healthy family. So in general, it's very important that we have women that can talk to their partners mm -hmm. about men's fertility, even about uh, prostate health. Because again, as I mentioned, we learn that women know a lot more than men. We when it do comes know to... a lot. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so especially when it comes to fertility, um, women know a lot. Yeah. Men doesn't know anything about men's fertility. And that's because women in the healthcare system at very young age just start visiting at least annually gynecologists, having conversation, get the education required. In the healthcare system, men's healthcare doesn't have any owner. So basically, urologists are, are, the, uh, are the owners of men's healthcare. Mm. Uh, but then we don't have frequent visits with urologists. Mm. Usually men are going to visit urologists uh, somewhere around 45, 50. Or when uh, something is wrong. When something is wrong and broken. <laughs> so so that, that's the difference. So yeah. when it comes to men's health care, it was not always preventative. Mm. And now I think we need to make it a preventative solution. We want men to talk about their prostate health and fertility issues and all those things early on, just because 50% of infertility cases, according to the statistics, is because of male factor. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't make sense women go first. So usually when it comes to such complications, the traditional notion is to put the responsibility on women. Mm. Statistically, we know that it's not true. Mm. So um, women go usually 
um, through the first set of uh, testings and treatment. And if there is no problem with women, then they refer the man to urologist to do testings and getting the treatments, mm -hmm. which doesn't make sense yeah. because a lot of time uh, treatments and testings for women are invasive and it, it's just easy for men to do a simple semen analysis test, get involved in the process. Yes. But then... But then we want to also have solution. There should be some easy accessible solution for men. Right now, um, at least in US, and I, I think it's the same thing in Europe, if you go to your app store and Google Play and search for women's fertility, uh, you'll get a lot of uh, technology solutions, which is fantastic. In the last 15 years, Femtech, fem, femtechs and uh, technologies for women yeah. uh, have done a tremendous work. It just they made it so easy for women to get access to gynecologists, yeah. to get access access to uh, educational contents, do yeah. period tracking, do um, um, sort of uh, the, the ovulation testings. Everything has been designed so that they get as much as information. And, they... and more women and more women are on social media talking about it than yeah. men when it comes to these issues. And and, I, and I mean, psychologically, women, uh, 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 traditionally, they were open to talk about these things yeah. uh, in their community. Men are not really talking about their problems when they reach out to each other. They, they don't share the stories. <laughs> and that's why you want a safe, you want a safe uh, bastion for men, a safe haven. So they go there, talk in private to someone and share their stories and get the support they need. Yeah. But back to my conversation. So that is putting a lot of pressure on women because now um, they are taking a lot of responsibility. They go through a lot of these um, uh, assessment and treatments. But if there is no parallel solution for men, all the burden would be on women. Mm. And we want to make sure that we solve for a solution so men could also be responsible. Yes. So men could also share the burden. Yes. There are a lot of men that they want to be proactive. There are a lot of men that they see that their partners are going through a lot of testing and assessments and, and uncomfortable sort yes. of uh, 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 um, procedures. And they want to be proactive. And I think we first need to solve for a solution and then ask men to be more proactive. Hallelujah to that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. But I know that some of the frustrating issues are mainly social misconceptions. That's right. How have you dealt with that? So education is, is one important aspect of what we are doing. Um, we are still working on this. We need yeah. to do a lot more research on that. Mm. The first thing that we have done, we started partnership with Harvard Health yeah. to provide high quality contents and educational materials to, to men. Mm. We find out that men are not going to spend 10 minutes reading an article. <laughs> so um, we, we ended up uh, summarizing a lot of these articles into a very short articles because we find out men are spending time on Instagram and learning things in Instagram. And games. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we designed our solution so that provide those educational contents in very short summary articles. Mm -hmm. And also we designed a very shorter version, which are very short tips. It's just one line of tips. They get a bunch of, they get a batch of tips um, uh, every other day and they can just swipe and, and learn a little bit more about their health. And then of course, if they know more, they're going to be more proactive. Of course, if they know that there is a problem and if there is an easy way that they start the conversation, they're going to be more involved in the process. Hopefully they are going to take more responsibility and um, and when it comes to their, um, uh, their partners and also it's going to be some burden on the family in general if yeah. one member of the family is not healthy. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And, and how easy is it for let's say someone to get Bastion's health program rather than, because I know for sure a lot of men, because they don't talk about these issues and in their private time, they go on Google, they spend time on Google, learning things that don't even, it's not specific to them. Right. And 
I, 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 I always say to people, like, when you need answers, <laughs> Google is not a place. But for easy access for your program, rather than spending time on Google, what would you tell them about the program? So our programs uh, right now, they are live in, in the U.S. Hopefully soon we can expand to um, other um, countries and countries. like Europe. Uh, but um, the so in US our our, our, um, sort of um, um, patients and customers usually find us in our website they purchase a health plan with us we manage to have a very low cost solutions Mm. um, that are available Um, right now uh, they need to pay out of pocket but the way that we designed it because in the U.S., uh, more than 50% of the population, they are on high deductible health care plans. These are the, the health care plans that at least they need to pay $8,000 out of pocket in order to, um, in order to, for, for their insurance to kick in and start taking care of their expenses. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we wanted, first of all, to focus on that portion of the population. So we have a solution for them, very low cost, less, it's, it saves more than uh, uh, 75% um, mm. compared to other solutions. Yeah. Um, they can purchase the plan, schedule the first uh, visit um, uh, right away yeah. and have the conversation. Then we refer them to a lab, uh, their local um, lab, and they go do the testings. The next conversation, they are going to have a conversation with our urologists who's going to do a complete assessment describe them all these possibilities and also start a treatment plan for them so that they can optimize their health when it comes to reproductive health and prostate health. In all the journey, we have a care coordinator. So the care coordinator uh, for every man is a dedicated um, care coordinator who they can text and call anytime that they want, get the answer they need. And we are creating this white glove experience so we have a we have an assistant who's going to follow up with them to make sure that they go to the lab and do the testings. Yeah. Uh, we are going to follow up a lot with them to make sure that they start um, uh, their uh, start taking their prescriptions. Uh, we want to make sure that they have gone to the pharmacy and picked up their pre- prescriptions. And therefore, we are basically going to do a lot of follow ups with them, and we want to be their friend in, in order to help them uh, improve their health. Are you an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, but you are unsure of how to get started, overwhelmed, lack confidence, productivity, and growth? Do you feel alone and struggling to build your tribe? Or you feel like the third world in your personal life? Are you trapped in an unending circle and wondering what your purpose on this earth is and if you're on the right track or purpose? Then this This podcast podcast is is for you. This podcast uses diverse entrepreneurial experiences to help demystify and detoxify your growth blockage through self-understanding, culture, and learning to use negativity and failures as tools for success. Only through understanding the necessity of your inner journey can you move from frustrations to liberation. Only through bravely making a conscious decision to change your life can you bridge the gap between failure Failure and and success. Join our host, Jojo Molly, as she takes you through many entrepreneurial experiences bridging culture, religion, and personal life issues. And now, here is your host, Jojo jo jo Molly. Amazing. For me, a lot of things goes on in my head when you're talking. I'm picking like, wow, wow, which one do I, do I go on? Because there's a lot of substance there. As a founder who has been on this extraordinary journey of not just changing perception, but also helping people power up their health through technology without them leaving their sofas. What the one thing you wish you had known when you began your journey as a founder? And what would you do differently if you knew what you know now? Yeah, that's, I mean, there, there are a lot that uh, as a founder, every single day you learn that you didn't know the day before. <laughs> So that's a, crea- that's a creator's uh, <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so it, it's very interesting. So usually entrepreneurs are going through ideation stage and then they are going to learn, they're going to execute. At some yeah. point, they need to take a very big risk and commit to what they're building. 
and then and then from that point on they need to persist they need to persist knock the door every single day, every single day go to work focus on what they are what they are doing and what a step at a time they need to go forward one thing that um, we all know is that it's very important to have um, um, a great team the team is very important in order to build anything and uh, and everyone knows about it probably but one thing which is what well, one thing that i learned in these years is that um first of all being an entrepreneur is not like uh, having a job it's choosing a life as well um, you choose to work 40 hours <laughs> a, a day <laughs> yeah so, so so therefore therefore having um, team members who are willing to work in the startups they need to also have the right mindset we are yeah. going to fail a lot we're going to see a lot of challenges mm-hmm. and that requires not only having intelligent people around us but also people with the right uh, mindset solving for technical issues is possible but it's hard to uh, have people with the same mindset yeah. or willing to fight every single day yeah. and uh, i think the soft skills and uh, having all the skills in in order to be ready to fight uh for for a big big uh vision yeah um, is something that uh, is required for for the team members and that's why at bastion we are we're always focusing on team members mm-hmm. that first of all they are ready for making a big change mm-hmm. and ready for all the challenges mm-hmm. then of course a lot of uh, them are intelligent and it's it's easy to find people that are that they know more than what you know um and 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 that's why i think that that was one thing that i learned uh, in the past uh, uh three to four years uh, that i'm working on building uh, i call it a tribe you know when you are going through a journey and you find your tribe you call it a team i call it a tribe mm-hmm. because tribes are people who believe in your vision they believe in your story yeah. and they would fight and support you and sometimes and the, the beauty about having a tribe is sometimes you are wrong as a tribe leader right yeah, you exactly. are wrong you the tribe they are there to direct you back to exactly. where you're supposed to be i always say to <laughs> entrepreneurs the first thing when you're starting is build a tribe these people are the people who will stand by you and you know fight for you and your vision and if you listen to my next podcast i i have a tribe one of my best friend and she's been like my shoulder so <laughs> that is a tribe but going back to what we're saying for bastion health you cater for reproductive health for men but you also cater for prostate wellness can you tell my listeners a bit about that yeah So uh prostate health actually is is a big problem also when it comes to men's uh, healthcare. Mm-hmm. Uh however reproductive health has a lot of impact. Okay. But the number of cases for prostate health is larger. Prostate enlargement for men is something it's it's, it's matter of um it's not matter of when I'm it's not matter of uh, if I'm getting prostate enlargement or not it's matter of when I'm getting prostate enlargement uh, symptoms. So as as we age, prostate starts growing, and then at some point in our life, we need to get some support in order to manage it. So um, statistically, 50% of men after age 45, they are getting some prostate enlargement symptoms. They it's it's um, frequent urination. It's the sense of uh, unemptying bladder, and um, and at some point they need to start having a conversation with their doctors. about 1 in 8 men in the US will be diagnosed by prostate cancer at some point in their life and uh the uh, very alarming statistic is that according to um um National Cancer Institute in 2018 only 26% of men after age 45 they have done their uh, annual prostate cancer screening so so, many- so there is there is a system you have to do it annually Yeah, so there is this annual. Can- so yeah, according to um, 
uh, CDC in the US and the American Cancer Association, after age 45, after age 50, um, you need to do it. But then if you have family history, after age 40 or 45, you need to do annual prostate screening. And annual prostate screening, many times men think that it's it's a rectal exam. It's not a rectal mm. exam. Rectal exam is one way to do prostate cancer screening. The other way is doing a blood work. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's a PSA test. Um, they, you, you do a blood work. And with that blood work, um, you get the result of the test. If, if the level of PSA is high, then they want to, in order to confirm the result, they may want to do um, um, a rectal exam or they, want, they may want to do a, a biopsy. So it's just an easy process. At Bastion, actually, we're working on our at-home testing kit for, um, for PSA testing and also for a urine test, uh, which is designed for prostate cancer screening. So the men in the comfort of their home, they need to put five drops of blood on a piece of paper and ship it to uh, to our partner laboratories and also put a little bit of uh, their urine in a cup and again ship it to, to our partner laboratory so that, again, we want to create this ecosystem so from the comfort of their home they can do the testing and be more compliant in order to annually check their prostate. And then if in case they have symptoms of prostate enlargement, it doesn't mean that they have cancer. It might be cancerous or it might be benign. If it's benign, it means that the prostate enlarged and we need to somehow uh, start uh, shrinking the size. And there are some medication for that. It doesn't necessarily need to be surgery. So there are some medication that could help men uh, shrink their prostate, relieve some of those um, uh, uncomfortable symptoms. Yeah. It's not really comfortable to wake up two or three times and go to bathroom. It's not comfortable to go to bathroom every two hours and that's what we want to make sure every every man know to easily get access to the assessment and the treatment they need. And also lifestyle coaching. There are a lot of lifestyle coaching that we can provide in order to make it easier for men to um, to basically have a, a, a better or convenient uh, approach to improve their reproductive health. I'm sorry, prostate health. Yes, seriously, listening to you, I'm not just learning about men health i am actually learning how i have not actually thought about a lot of these things and the male listeners if some of my male listeners are going through some of these fertility issues uh, prostate issues which can be a very lonely journey yeah i i have been in journeys in my life where there was a personal issue i felt lonely what is your consultation process to make it easier for people to not feel? Because sometimes it's, it's the society saying you can't do this. You, this is what a man should do. This is what a woman should do. How can Bastion help them and how can they find you? Yeah, so so basically the, the easy thing is to go to getbastion.com. And then in yeah. there, they can go to our prostate health and reproductive health pages and services. They can see us there. They can read articles. They can download our app and uh, start reading articles, even if they don't want to enroll in our programs. Um, and then when, when they're comfortable, they can purchase the plans and, and start um, using our services. Also, uh, in Apple Store and Google Play, if they search for Bastion Health, we are the first speciality telehealth for men's reproductive health and prostate health. Mm. And uh, and they basically they can find us there and get the um, the support they need. When when they start uh, scheduling their first visits, within 24 hours in the comfort of their home, while they're sitting on their sofa, they can talk to our nurse practitioner. They are going to go over all the uh, medical history they had, and then they are going to make some initial suggestions for them mm. and help them to do the initial testings. And then our urologists are going to sit down with them, describe all these possibilities and and and, and solutions that are that is in front of them to uh, to improve their their health. Guys, just a quick one. For me, I have a calling, and the calling is to help entrepreneurs, to help people, 
And if you're listening, you can identify with what Reza is saying, fertility issue, prostate issues. There is no social shame about nothing. If you have a problem, you need a solution. The universe gives us a lot of answers in things. I, I always say I am a channel, you know, it's free. I do this as a part-time thing. If you need help and you need someone to give you direction or you need to read something to give you direction on where you need to go, look down below and you can find details. And I'm going to go into one thing. Yeah. As a man who had a personal experience and you took such a decisive leap in founding a fantastic business and helping men worldwide. What is your advice for entrepreneurs who are scared to take charge, you know, of their own journey and make changes, particularly in areas of known? Because this area you're in is actually very, a lot of men will be scared to go into it. It's unknown and is very open. You are opening up yourself, your privacy. What is your advice, Reza? So um, for any entrepreneur everywhere in the world, at some point in the journey, they need to make a risk. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, entrepreneurs at some point, um, because they feel like there is a lot of risk, they may give up. But then those entrepreneurs who persist, they succeed. There's a nice quote which says in 2020, the risk of not taking any risk is more than taking risk. <laughs> so Love take that. risk. Take risk. When when you can take risk and a smart risk, of course. We don't want to take risk without having research and knowledge. Yeah. And of course, at some point, if we find out that um, the path that we are uh, going is not the right path, there is always um, uh, uh, a possibility for pivot. You can pivot to a better path and continue. But the main thing is that if there is a problem that you're solving for, definitely there is a solution that you can find for that problem. Yeah. So um, if, if, if there is one advice, feel free to risk and there is a lot that you can learn. There is no um, failure. Even if you fail, you have learned a lot. And oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. One question I always ask my guests, can you tell my listeners one benefit of being a founder of your own business? Yeah. And one drawback you have faced because maybe you touched on this earlier on, but I want you to go into more details. A lot of people are afraid of failing. What you did is a leap. It's, it's a leap because you have a personal issue, not Probably it's not wasn't a problem, but it was personal. But you thought, you know what? I'm going to use what I have gone through to help somebody else to grow. Please, can you try to tell my listeners what your drawbacks were and what were the benefits of you taking this leap? Yeah, I mean, the benefit is that you grow. Uh, personally, you grow. And um, it's, I think it, uh, I think it's more realistic it's a it's a more real life you get a lot of challenges which is in a real life you really see a lot of challenges and and it just open up your um, eyes and and how to to change to change your lifestyle in order to be someone who is making a change and it's it is satisfying to be honest it's satisfying to solve for a problem that exists and you're solving it and help other people. So um, that's that's one major benefit um, of um, of doing what I'm doing every single day. That from, a, from a personal perspective, I'm gonna sorry to cut you short there. From a personal perspective, fulfillment of doing. I I, I was reading um, your profile and what you've been through, and then going from you know what this is what I feel, this is what I see. I'm going to change it and I'm going to use it to change others. From that perspective, what is the, I want you to tell 
my listeners about the fulfillment of doing, of taking your environment and using that to make changes to be who you are today? It, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. I mean, that's again, like as a, as a founder and um, an entrepreneur, you usually hear a lot of no's yeah. more than yes. Mm -hmm. You usually see a lot of closed doors more than open doors, mm -hmm. which means that at the end of the day, you're really tired with a lot of obstacles in front of you. But then if you have the good feeling about what you're doing, if you get that fulfillment, satisfaction of what you're doing, the next day after having a, a sleep, you're going to get restarted and then you're going to sit down again behind your computer and trying to solve. You're trying to focus and one step at a time, solve the problems and go forward. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end of the night, you're going to be tired. But then as long as you have that huge, tremendous uh, fulfillment, that's going to um, persist. That's going to basically be what you're going to do the next day. And to be honest, that's that's a very phenomenal experience. That's something that I can't exchange with anything else. <laughs> Reza, I am, I am so, so grateful you came on this podcast because for me, I am a big believer on taking whether it's negativity, whatever, because life throws things at you, right? Mm -hmm. It's always throwing things at you. When you think something is going right, oh yeah, wait for it. It's going to come bashing. And all of that is to test you to grow to the next level. So I love it when I hear people who've used their environment to change themselves. I really would love to have you again so we can discuss more about this amazing journey you are on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jojo, for having me. It was it was great talking to you. Really was uh, very exciting. Uh, um, talking to you and uh, and sharing all, all all what we are doing at Bastion. Well, you're going to share more because there's more coming and I'm going to be on your case and I'm going to be asking you more about the development. So you'll be back on very soon. Thank you so much, Juja. It was <laughs> okay. great talking to you, really. Thank you so much for being here today. I really enjoy chatting with you and to all my listeners, I say thank you so much for listening and I hope you found value in what Reza said or we've discussed today is going to be linked down below and you can always message me or if you want to talk to Reza, you've got all the information down below. Otherwise, just contact me and just let's start a chat and talk about how we can help with the fertility issues it's not all about us anymore women there is a new board down there until next time yep. stay focused stay determined and be good <laughs>